Ladies and gentlemen, in this Red Gaming Tech.com video, I suggest you have your tinfoil hats ready, or at the very least be ready to make them, because apparently in next week, the United Nations International Telecommunications Union will be meeting in Dubai, and yes, that was a bit of a mouthful, to figure out how to control the internet. Representatives from 193 nations will attend a nearly two-long week meeting, according to news reports. I quote from the Wall Street Journal, next week the ITU, that's the International Telecommunications Union, holds a negotiation conference in Dubai. The past months we have brought many leaks of proposals by the new treaty, US congressional resolutions, and much of the commentary, including this column, have focused on proposals by the authoritarian governments to censor the internet, just as object just as objectionable are proposals that ignore how the internet works, threatening its smooth and open operations, reports once again the Wall Street Journal. So proposals to control the internet are not exactly new. They've been, well, around for a while now due to a, a number of reasons. Obviously, freedom of information is something that certain uh, governments aren't too happy with and also of course rampant piracy and that kind of thing is something that certain media outlets are definitely not very happy with. Reading a little bit more from the Wall Street Journal it says and so to send the freewheeling digital world back to the state control of analog era China, Russia, Iran and Arab countries are trying to hijack a UN agency has nothing to do with the internet. For more than a year, these countries have lobbied an agency called the International Communications Union to take over the rules and workings of the internet, creating in 1985 the International Telegraph Union, last draft of the Treaty on Communications in 1988, before the commercial internet, when te telecommunications meant voice telephone calls. Um, so, yeah. It's unsurprising that Google aren't exactly happy about the measures and has actually come out and said the ITU is the wrong place to make decisions about the future of the internet. Only governments have a voice here at the ITU. This includes governments that do not support a free and open internet. Engineers, companies and people that build and use the web have no vote. The ITU is also secretive. The treaty conference and proposals are confidential ads at Google. So obviously Google are not very happy about this for many different reasons indeed. One of course is the Google, just like Facebook, want open information just like of course Wikipedia does. Apparently proposals for the ITU treaty run into over 200 pages which is absolutely ridiculous and the idea is to apply the ITU's long distance telephone rules to internet by creating a sender party pays rule. International telephone calls include a fee from the originating country to the local phone company at the receiving end. Under a sender pays approach, the United States based websites would have to pay the local network for each visitor from overseas. This is basically a way that they can tax Google and Facebook. The idea is technically impossible because unlike phone networks, the internet doesn't recognize national borders, but authorita but authoritarians are pushing the tax, hoping that citizens will cut off from US websites that decide foreign visitors are too expensive to serve. So yeah, this one's a really odd one. Um, obviously I am completely and utterly against this because of many different reasons. One is that I believe freedom of the internet. I believe that the internet is a very powerful tool, and sure, it can be used for very bad things, of course. It can be used negatively, just like any tool, but it could also be used for great good. Wikipedia is an example of this. I'm not saying I'm Wikipedia's biggest advocate. Yes, Wikipedia can have problems, and of course, there have been many troll articles to prove that, you know, what... People could just make up any rubbish on Wikipedia. However, the bottom line is the actual idea of Wikipedia is a very good one, and the same with Facebook and Google. Now, obviously, there are privacy issues, for example, with Facebook and Google. I'm just using these two companies as examples, as that's what the articles that I've read have used. But let's face it, the idea of actually open information is a lot better than closed off 
you can't get what you want and the idea of not even be able to you know network your friends effectively isn't exactly a charming one either now i understand that for governments and particularly those of i'm going to go with closed states to not offend anyone the idea of a very open internet where anyone can free, uh, speak freely is a scary thought because it becomes extremely hard to police what people are going to say and obviously certain riots and that kind of thing for various countries have been organized over the internet and that's not the only thing but let's just be honest the internet is also a revolution it's a way that everyone can communicate it's a way that people can share information we can grow people can learn what they need to learn to improve their lives and let's just face it right now in terms of global business and everything else um, the company I work for, which I'm not going to drop any names, uh, we rely on the internet um, and, you know, internet in terms of internet advertising and, uh, you know, our traffic and so on. That's basically what we are, although we do actually have a bricks and mortar presence, we do pretty much rely on upon the internet and that's, you know, for everyone else as well. I'm personally very doubtful that this is ever going to really come into play for many reasons, mostly technical feasibility imagine for example just how much extra traffic is going to be actually used um, and thrown about the internet just for this it's you know imagine for example uh, let's go with Google I'm not sure exactly how many figures um, in terms of visitors they get per let's go with per minute but I'm willing to bet it's more than a few hundred and probably going to be like 50,000 or so. So imagine, you know, 50,000 of those, their servers are not going to do too well because it's going to be, you know, so much traffic. Um, I have figures here somewhere. Let me look for them. Apparently, and I have no idea just how true this is without doing much more research, there are 500,000 new users every day that are connecting on the internet. There's about 2 billion around the world at the moment, which, you know, considering there's around 7 billion on the planet, that's not really... An unsurprising number when you think about it is around 40,000 networks connected connected to around 425,000 global routes at the moment. Obviously, those networks include, say, smaller websites such as RGT, all the way to the absolutely massive networks like Facebook and Microsoft and all of those different websites, which of course now cloud computing and so on is becoming a bigger thing, it becomes even more difficult to figure out exactly where a website is based. Also, you've got other issues, such as, let's say, VPNs. For example, I've mentioned many times before that one of the reasons that I get games early on Steam, even though I absolutely hate doing this, but that's, you know, that's beside the issue, is I basically have to use um, an American servers that we've got access to for work. And with those American servers, it basically allows us to connect to them. And obviously, sometimes I'll just IDP to those servers. Or if I don't happen to have access to those because I'm unlucky that day, I have you know various VPNs that you know are publicly available, and you could just go on and say, hey, you know what, I'm going to activate my game via Steam or what have you, you know, whatever application Origin or whatever you need to do. But uh, this is where it's becoming increasingly difficult. So I, I don't think this is ever going to really amount to much. And if it does, I think it's going to be an absolute catastrophe um, for everyone involved. So once again, this is a bit of a rant video, more of a news. I wouldn't really worry about it too much at the moment. Um, I think that... It's going to be very interesting if I actually do try to even somewhat do this. Obviously, it doesn't necessarily mean that all countries are going to comply with it. And obviously, there's a hell of a lot of information that still needs to be fought up. Anyway, this is just a quick report as I wanted to throw it out there. Uh, I'm not necessarily condoning it or whatever. I just obviously am reporting upon it and throwing out my idea of just how ridiculous this is. So anyway, I uh, hope that you guys have enjoyed the video. Uh, please leave your comments below. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure really there's much more to be said on this one. There's a lot of information I could get into, but I don't want to make this video too, too technical. Perhaps if people uh, would like a follow-up video, I will, but... I decided to keep this one fairly basic now, just so that it doesn't go over people's heads and so on, and, you know, just to appeal to as many people as possible. So anyway, bye for now, and uh, obviously if you can comment, rate, subscribe, you know the drill. I want you people to get involved in the time. So, enjoy.